Hey guys, it's Milena. I've got a little secret to share. There is this doll I've got a long time, like a um, year or two, and I never got around to sharing her unboxing with you. I've been caught up with other dolls and just couldn't find the time. But I realize it's a sin to keep such a gem from you, so it's better late than never, right? The Asian store in Akihabara often has unique doll exhibitions, where they offer one one of a kind dolls through a lottery. These dolls are specially customized by various artists who also craft their outfits. On a whim, I entered one of these adorable dolls without much expectation and soon forgot about it. To my surprise, I got an email saying I had won. What? The box is just the usual transport ASIN box without any cardboard inserts. There is only ASIN logo on the sides. You can see the doll from all angles and the extra things included with her. The boards ASIN used for the doll's presentation were inserted at the top of the box. They contain artists' names, their Twitter accounts, set contents, and doll's name popping. There is a short description too. Yellow girl in the pop world. There is also the price of the doll, which was 24,200 yen with taxes. One of my favorite parts of this custom Aizen doll is her golden curly hair. They are very fluffy and very nicely cut and styled. It looks like it was made by a professional hair master, not some generic cut from a factory. On the sides of her unevenly cut bangs, I can feel a bit of hardness from some styling substance. However, besides that, hair is soft and I love touching it. Underneath the head is painted white. Her face just stole my heart from the first moment. When I saw those beautiful big round eyes and surprised mouths, I knew she's my favorite out of all of the dolls from this event. This face is painted by hand and it's crazy to think about it as it has so many little details on such a small face. Face. I can even see some hair on her eyebrows. The eye color is stunning. It is a gradient from blue to leaf green color with flares and purple and burgundy shades here and there. Her lips are made with a 3D effect and unusually for Asian dolls, she even has some lips. On the corners there is a teeny mole that creates a unique appearance. The cheeks, nose, chin and area around the eyes are all blushed. Isn't she cute? Her artist is very talented. I'm in love. Let's finally move to her outfit. It is also just perfect to my liking. The whole outfit gives me some 80s, 90s vibe. Do you feel the same? She's wearing a turquoise cardigan with sparkling threads in it. It is oversized with puffed sleeves. I think currently the style is back in trend. To it I attach three pins. The first is a cat face pin. It is on a metallic base and covered with epoxy on top. Another one looks like a red metallic flower and it is made out of plastic. The last one is of a round shape and covered with black and white striped fabric. My favorite piece of her outfit is these awesome overalls. They are very playful and cute. The purple and pink color definitely influenced my decision on applying on her. It has some floral elements as well as bird and deer silk. The straps are connected with round metallic buckles. The same buckles are also used for decorations on the sides of doll's hips, right on top of big, slightly gathered pockets. These pockets are fully functional. The pants are rolled and we can see that the inner fabric is a white and purple plate. As one of the straps in a fashionable manner is pulled down, we can see the same fabric behind the chest area of the overalls. There is also another pin attached, which is a pink pearlescent flower made out of plastic. This girl is really into pins, the same as me. Do you like pins? Her blouse on the opposite is pretty simple, just plain white cotton. It has five buttons on the front, which are just imitations, and blouse actually fastens with some metallic snaps. The blouse's sleeveless is a big triangle color. This color has some laces on the edges. As an accessory, she has a golden chain with three stars pendant. It 
fastens behind with a metallic snap. Her sneakers look like pink chucks. For the logo on the inner side, there are cute white wings. The side of the sole and the toe cup are white and made of a faux leather. The sole has a check pattern and is made of some soft material. The laces are long and wide. These sneakers look to me like standard ASIN sneakers, but I might be wrong. On the back was attached an additional outfit created by the artist. I'm not sure if it's an underwear or some beach clothes. What do you think? It is a top and shorts made from a soft fabric and in colorful pastel stripes. A pretty pink string is attached to both. The top fastens behind with a little white velcro. The paper hangers is obviously cut by hands, which I thought is very sweet, as the outfit is not just in some bag. Details are essential. I would love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below with your favorite part of unboxing or which doll you would like to see next. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future doll adventures from Japan. With the doll, I also got this mystery box inside the bubble wrap. Here is a list of what is inside, instructions, hands and the doll's pedestal. The doll got a few additional items to make her look even more complex. Here is the brush made out of pink laces. It is a flower with a long tails. Or maybe this one is for the owner who is me. Whoa, another cat pin. This time it's more abstract. It's a pink with the white dots. Another cute item is this handmade lollipop. It's on a wooden stick, most likely a toothpick. The lollipop itself is made out of polymer clay and rolled into a flat spiral. The color selection reminds me of the top and shorts we saw before. Oh, it's very thoughtful. There is an additional silicone stoppers for pins in case you lost the original. They are shaped like flowers. Here we also got a handmade booklet of the doll. It is actually a simple A4 paper folded in half. On the front it's doll's big portrait with the name, set details and authors and collection name. On the back is explanation of some details. In Information about carrying the doll and materials used for her face up. All illustrated with little colorful photos of the real thing. Oh, there is also a Twitter link for the creators. I need to follow. I love the hand parts that I included. They all have cute blushing by the artist and the connector is a bit modified to fit better. The doll stand could be decorated with an awesome wing. Looks like it was cast from a resin, similar to what people use for anime figures. This wing has a gradient from purple to white color, which match her overall color. On the purple part there are stars decoration. One side of the wing has the purple part at the base of the wing, and on another side it is on the tip of the wings, so you can pick the one you like the most. Also included was a postcard with information about the stand and I was right. It is a cat from a raisin, same as Garage Kids. If you didn't know, Garage Kids are unassembled and unpainted figures, which are very popular in Japan. There is also the base of the doll stand. It is transparent and has a hexagon shape. There are multiple holes in which you can insert sticks, which will help in holding the doll and the wing. They also got different sizes of the doll holders to use in different situations. Some fit to hold a doll on her leg, others on the waist. I'm very happy with my new retro doll, or oh, that I finally unboxed her. And she also happens to be my first custom doll made not by me, but by someone else. Do you have any custom dolls? Do you prefer unique customized dolls made by individuals or dolls made by companies? Let me know in the comments down below. Love dolls and con con!